In today's case, we cover the shocking truth behind Monica Kimani's tragic demise, a case that has captured the attention of Kenyans for the last five years. Join us as we unravel the intricate web of events that led to her untimely demise and shed light on the accused Joey Rongo and Jackie Maribe, the now infamous Kenyan journalist, and their alleged involvement in this startling crime. Welcome to Silent Shadows. As always, if you appreciate our true crime storytelling, support our bi-weekly series by liking and subscribing. Together, we uncover compelling tales of crimes and mysteries in Kenya and beyond, presenting well-balanced narratives that respect the victims and their loved ones. Monica Nyawira Kimani, known affectionately as Monique, was born on 12th October 1990 in Nyandarua County. She was the eldest child of Paul Ngarama and Miriam Kimani. Her father described her as both beautiful and sharp. Monica was dedicated to her studies, a quality that shone during her time at Kenya Polytechnic, now Technical University of Kenya, where she pursued a degree in international relations, graduating in 2013. During her college years, a friend introduced her to Joseph Urungu, also known as Joey. However, as she relocated to Juba, South Sudan, her friendship with Joey evolved from a casual acquaintanceship into a long-distance friendship and eventually a friends with benefits relationship. In South Sudan, Monica joined her father, now Bishop Paul Ngarama, who had moved there in 2007. Bishop Ngarama initially started a business selling Kenyan newspapers and gained recognition within the Kenyan community in South Sudan. Later, he moved from Juba to Rumbek Town, an agricultural hub in South Sudan. There, he developed a friendship with Daniel Akot, the local governor and lieutenant general in the Sudan People's Liberation Army. With Governor Court's assistance, Bishop Ngarama established churches in various parts of South Sudan. In 2013, Monica secured a job at the governor's office and her professional relationship with the governor grew over time, with her accompanying him to meetings and trips. Eventually, she moved up ranks in his office, making a name and wealth for herself. Monica's journey continued as she moved from Rumbek town back to Juba and was alleged to have secured a job at the Kenyan embassy. Although the Kenyan Ministry of Foreign Affairs refuted these claims, stating that she never worked in any of its diplomatic offices. Having lived in South Sudan for four years, from 2013 to 2017, Monica took charge of the family businesses. A career service between Kenya and Sudan and Milipol General Trading Limited, a family cleaning business. She also ventured into dealing with beauty products, especially from Kenya to Uganda. Over time, her business expanded and she established her interior design company, securing contracts from government offices and private organizations with the aid of Governor Court's connections. By age 28, Monica was living the life. She had acquired properties and land all over Nairobi, and she owned a variety of luxury cars. On Wednesday 19 September 2018, Monica traveled from Juba to Kenya to celebrate her upcoming 29th birthday and plan her marriage to her fiancé Yasir Mohammed. At 6.21 p.m., she called her brother George Kimani to say she was in Nairobi and going to Dubai to meet Yasir the next day. Later, at 7.30 p.m., a taxi dropped her off at Lamuria Gardens Apartments in Kilimani. Two neighbors visited her at around 8.30 p.m. Then at 8.45 p.m., Joey Rongo, a.k.a. Joey, who had a friends with benefits relationship with Monica, arrived in a taxi at her residence. This was after leaving his fiancée Jackie Maribe's car, a silver Toyota Allion, at a petrol station with his co-worker, a junior police officer named Orlando Jennings. Joey arrived at Monica's residence dressed in jeans, a grey hoodie, a hat, and a white kaftan. According to Orlando's testimony in court, he alleges that Joey also had a firearm borrowed from his neighbor Brian Kasaine, who was a licensed gun holder. Not only was Joey dressed suspiciously and carrying a firearm, but he also used an ID with a fake name, Dominic Harun Bissera, to register at the gate. After entering Monica's apartment, he found Monica with her two neighbors. He hugged Monica and then went into the kitchen, returning with a glass of wine. Monica introduced Joey to her neighbors as Joe, mentioning that he worked in the security business. 
After a few chats, at around 9 p.m., the neighbors left, leaving Monica and Joey alone. A few hours later, on Thursday, 20th September 2018, at 2 a.m., Joey called Brian Kasaine, a neighbor at Royal Park Estate in Langata, where Joey and his fiancée Maribel lived. Joey called Brian via WhatsApp, borrowing paraffin or anything flammable like an air freshener. Brian also alleged in his testimony in court that he told Joey he did not have those items, but he also noted that Joey sounded odd and hyper. About an hour later, at 3.35 a.m., security cameras showed Joey leaving Monica's apartment in Jackie Marie Silver Toyota Alley on which Orlando, Joey's workmate, had driven to their apartments. Joey later dropped Orlando at Ngara and Joey proceeded to Club 14 Westlands where he joined his fiancée Marie-Bé and her friends. The two, Joey and Marie-Bé, then headed to their house at Royal Park Apartments, Langata, where they arrived a few minutes after 4 a.m. At the time, 29-year-old Jackie Marie-Bé was a high-flying media personality in Kenya, working as a primetime news anchor at Citizen TV. Joey and Marie-Bé had met in July of 2017 at a political rally, at the time, Joey was working as a VAP bodyguard for the former Taita Taveta women representative, Joyce Wanjalali. The two hit it off and got engaged 11 months later in June 2018. Joey was described by those who knew him as a mysterious person. According to sources, he lived a lavish lifestyle, frequently visiting upscale clubs and bars in Nairobi and mingling with beautiful women. Rumors circulated that he had accumulated his wealth during his time in Afghanistan and Iraq, where he worked as a paramilitary for two military contract companies. However, this was contrary to the picture that Pamela Kembo, Joey's and Maribe's household painted of Joey during the court proceedings. Pamela alleged that Joey would drive Maribe every day to work in the morning in her car drive back home, sleep, and pick Maribe from work once she wrapped the 9 p.m. primetime news at Citizen TV. Pamela is also noted to have seen a firearm in the house which belonged to Joey, which adds credibility to the fact that Joey is knowledgeable about firearms and tactics that could cause harm, such as the life-ending harm caused to Monica. Later, on Thursday 20th September 2018, at 11.30 a.m., Monica's brother, George Kimani, worried because he could not reach his sister all night, went to her apartment to check on her. Monica had also missed her flight to Dubai and their mother had called several times, but Monica's phone remained unanswered. This prompted the mother to also nudge George to go check on his sister. George testified that upon arriving at Monica's apartment at Lamuria Gardens, he found the house locked from the inside, with the key still in the door. With the help of a neighbor and the caretaker, they broke into Monica's apartment, only to find her deceased in the bathtub. The perpetrator had left the water running, her legs and hands were bound, her mouth tied shut, and she had a deep wound on her neck caused by a knife, which led to her demise. George further alleges that when the security guard and the neighbor described the person who was last seen with Monica, he thought it was Joey. At 3.30 p.m., the police, having analyzed the scene, took Monica's body to Chiromo Mochari. On the other side of town, at around the same time, Brian Kasaine had gone to Joey and Maribeth's house to borrow a car to pick his son from school. He alleges that he met Joey outside the house wearing a white vest and grey sweatpants. According to Brian, Joey seemed deep in thought and distracted, which was unlike him. Brian then inquired why Joey called him late at night asking for paraffin, to which Joey alleged that he was on a security assignment the previous night and injured someone. Joey further added that he had used an air freshener to burn the things he wanted to get rid of, while pointing towards an empty plot across their house where he had burnt the items. Brian then picked the car keys and left. He alleges that he returned the keys at around 4.15 p.m. and gave them to Joey and Maribe's house help Pamela and went home. Later that night, during the 9 p.m. primetime news on Citizen TV, Jackie Maribe, Joey's fiancé, reported Monica's gruesome demise. Given Maribe's connection to Joey, this became one of the most surreal moments in Kenyan television.
Now, police in Nairobi are investigating the murder of a businesswoman found dead at her rented apartment in Lumwira Gardens, a Kilimani area, this morning. The lady identified as Monica Kimani was chatting with her brother last night before she suddenly went silent. After wrapping up the news report, Marube headed home. At around 1 a.m. upon arriving at her house, Marube testified to the court that Joy came to her bedroom crying, saying, Jackie, I'm sorry, I love you. But Marie begged not him. She alleges that Joy later proceeded to the closet where he shot himself. She says that she jumped out of bed and went to the closet. He was lying on the floor with blood on his upper left chest area. Marie allegedly panicked and dashed out to get her phone. When she returned, Joy was nowhere to be seen. Marube further indicated that on checking outside the window, she saw Joey at their neighbor's Brian Kasaine's house. Brian testified in court that Joey had knocked on their gate in the wee hours. He opened the gate only to find Joey writhing in pain and Marube standing next to him shaking with her phone in hand. She told Brian that Joey had shot himself. Joey allegedly was yelling at Marube saying if she wanted to leave him and go with his child, he shall die and she should bury him at Langata Cemetery. He continued shouting at Marube, saying to her that if she wanted to throw him out of the house, it was fine. Joey then asked Brian to go retrieve from their house the firearm that he had lent him the previous day. Brian rushed to Joey and Marube's house and saw a trail of blood leading to the master bedroom, clothes scattered in the house, scattered bullets on the floor and the firearm. He alleges that he took the firearm back to his house and hid it in the ceiling. At 1.30 a.m., Marube, Brian and Catherine, Brian's wife, took Joey to Langata Hospital, but they were referred to another hospital where the doctors dressed the wounds and demanded to see the police report from Joey for him to access full treatment. Joey also took photos of the hospital after getting his wound dressed and posted them on social media, which struck many as odd. They then went back home and in the morning at 8 a.m., Maribel went to work, leaving Joey in the house nursing his gunshot wound. After leaving work in the evening, the police stated that at 7.05 p.m., Maribel, Joey, Brian and Catherine went to the Langata police station to report Joey's shooting. It is important to note that at this point, Monica's gruesome demise was everywhere in the news and the police were actively looking for the person who took her life. At around 8 p.m., the police from Mangata police station visited the scene of the crime, Maribe's house, and interrogated the security guards to ascertain the events of the night surrounding Joey's shooting. Later, the police from Langata police station who had visited Maribe's home received a support request from their colleagues at Kilimani police station asking them to help support them in finding Joey who was suspected to be the person who took Monica's life and the silver Toyota Allion which he drove away with. It took two days for the Langata police to ascertain that the Joey who came to report the shooting was the same Joey who was being sought after for allegedly taking Monica's life. On Monday, 24th September 2018, Joey was arrested at Maribe's house in connection to Monica's gruesome demise. He was taken to Langata police station. Maribe then went missing for a few hours and she later said that after Joy was arrested, she panicked and went to her parents' house. Since she did not believe that her fiancé was arrested in connection to a gruesome death that she had reported on live TV. In Maribe's compound, the police also found a partially burnt white kaftan, t-shirt and hat. These were the same clothes that Joey wore when he went to see Monica at her apartment a few days earlier. On Friday 28th September 2018, Monica Kimani was laid to rest in an emotional burial at her parents' home in Gilgil. In the following days, Joey, Maribe and Brian Kasaine were detained by police to allow them to complete the investigation. Jackie Maribe was released on bail almost a month later on 30th October 2018. Unfortunately, this case marks the fall from grace for Maribe, a renowned media personality in Kenya. She went on to resign from her job and finding another job proved difficult. It also marked the end of her relationship with Joey.
Things were equally difficult for Joey. Almost two years after his arrest, he was to be released on a $20,000 bail on 13 February 2020. However, he failed to meet his bail terms, forcing him to remain behind bars at committee prisons for almost a month. At the time, his family was striving to raise the money and even tried raising money online through well-wishers to secure his release. On 11th March 2020, after almost a month, his family managed to reach the court's demands, securing Joey's release from committee prisons where he had been for 16 months. In his ruling, Justice Wakiaga, who granted Joey bail, said that there were no compelling reasons to have the suspect detained longer at that stage of the trial because 15 witnesses had already testified. Among them, Maribe's house help, security guards from Lamuria Gardens where Monica lived, and Brian Kasaine, whose gun was allegedly used by Joey to shoot himself after the incident. While delivering a judgment on his release, the judge cautioned him against commenting to the media and posting on social media platforms about the case. Joey was also asked to report to his area chief every month. Once out of prison on bail and in a bid to make it back to the limelight, Joey released a gospel single titled Nishikilie in August of 2020. He continued his journey as a gospel artist and he put up this image even on Instagram where he constantly posted motivational quotes. However, he could not quite shake off the fact that he was the main suspect in the tragic demise of Monica as seen during the last day of the trial on 21st July 2022. Chief Inspector of Police Maxwell Oteno testified for the prosecution that investigating officers recovered a pair of Joy's partially burnt shots from Maribe's house, which had traces of blood. The DNA profile generated from blood stains found on this pair of shots matched that of Monica. The chief inspector of police, while being cross-examined by Maribe's defense lawyer, Kato Keegan, stated that there was no material link in Maribe to the murder investigation and that there was no DNA or fingerprint relationship between her and Monica Kimani. There was also no telephone data to demonstrate that she communicated with the deceased. Maribe also gave timings of where she was and the people she was with when Monica's murder allegedly occurred. She said that she was at Loyal Media Services from morning until 9.30 p.m. According to Maribe's court testimony, after work at 9.30 p.m., she left for Q Lounge, a restaurant across from where she worked at Citizen TV. She claimed that at 11.30 p.m., her co-worker Monica Kirago showed up at Q Lounge and let her know that Joey was looking for her. Later, according to Maribe, she called Joey to let him know she was going to Club 40 in Westlands with her friends, where Joey joined them before Joey and Maribe headed home in Langata. The case is still ongoing. Joey and Maribe will know their fate in court on 15th December 2023. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you in our next video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get notified when the video is up. Until then, please take care, stay safe, and always trust your gut.